All right, in this clinical explainer, we're diving into a really key paper from 2015 by Chang and his team. We're going to focus on their proposed technique for getting what they call positive medial cortical support when you're managing those tricky, unstable pertrochanteric fractures. So let's start with the big problem we all face in the clinic. We've gotten really good at getting these geriatric hip fractures to heal, right? The union rates are high, the x-rays look great, but the patient's functional recovery, well, that often tells a very different story. And that gap, that discrepancy, remains a huge challenge for us. Okay, so the heart of this paper is this concept they call positive medial cortical support, or PMCS for short. Now, this isn't your standard textbook anatomic reduction. It's a functional one, where you intentionally position the head-neck fragment a little bit superomedially to the femoral shaft. The entire idea is that this specific move is fundamental to improving the stability of your final construct. So here's how we're going to break it down. We'll start with the clinical challenge, walk through the study's methods, look at the key x-ray findings, and then really dig into what it all means. Finally, we'll wrap up with the big take-home points and recommendations for your practice. All right, let's get into it. When it comes to managing these unstable fractures, everything, and I mean everything, hinges on achieving a stable fixation. And as the authors really drive home, the primary determinant of that stability is the quality of your initial fracture reduction. And this quote from the paper just nails it. We think about all those factors influencing outcomes, bone quality, the fracture pattern, which nail you use, where you place it. But Chang's team maintains that the quality of the reduction itself is paramount. It really does set the stage for everything that follows. So this all leads to the million dollar question, doesn't it? The one this paper is really trying to answer. How can we, as surgeons, actually optimize our reduction technique to prevent these constructs from failing and ultimately to improve the clinical outcomes for our patients with these tough fracture patterns? Okay, so to see how they tackled that very question, let's take a closer look at the study's methodology. So what they did was a retrospective analysis. They looked back at 127 patients with a mean age of almost 79 years, so your typical patient population. All of them had unstable pertrochanteric fractures, specifically the AO-OTA 31A2.2s and 2.3s. And treatment was standardized. Everyone got a cephalomedullary nail, and they all had at least six months of follow-up. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. A key part of this study is how they classified the post-operative reduction. They went way beyond just looking at simple alignment and defined three very distinct groups based entirely on that medial cortical apposition. First up is that positive medial cortical support, or PMCS group. Again, this is that non-anatomic reduction where the head-neck fragment's medial cortex is deliberately positioned superomediately to the shaft's cortex. The whole point is to create a functional buttress against collapse. The second group is the neutral position. This is what we'd all probably consider a traditional, perfect anatomical reduction, where the medial cortices of the two main fragments are lined up in smooth, direct contact. And the third group is negative medial cortical support, or NMCS. Now, this is the position we all strive to avoid. It's where the head-neck fragment gets displaced laterally, creating a gap and a complete loss of that critical medial cortical buttress. So how did they do in their own surgical series? Well, pretty impressively. They managed to achieve that positive medial cortical support in a whopping 70% of their cases. About 20% ended up in a neutral position, and just under 10% resulted in that undesirable negative support position. Okay, now look at this table. This is really the money shot. The data at three months shows some significant differences. The PMCS group lost less than one degree of their neck shaft angle, compared to almost nine degrees in the NMCS group. Femoral neck shortening was also way less. But here's what's really clinically meaningful. The PMCS group achieved full weight bearing about three weeks earlier than the NMCS group. That's a huge difference for our patients. So this begs the question, right? Why do these specific radiological findings translate into such superior clinical results? Well, the answer really lies in the biomechanics of the construct. The authors make a really critical distinction here between controlled impaction and fracture collapse. Controlled impaction is actually what you want. It's that limited sliding that allows the fracture to settle and achieve secondary stability. That's what's associated with PMCS. Fracture collapse, on the other hand, is the enemy. It's that uncontrolled sliding that leads to a gross loss of reduction. And that's what you see with NMCS. 
So this leads us to the fundamental biomechanical question. Why is this non-anatomic positive medial cortical support position so much better, biomechanically speaking, than an anatomic or even a negative reduction? Well, the failure mechanism in NMCS is pretty clear. When the patient starts to bear weight, that proximal fragment has no medial buttress, so it just displaces laterally. It impacts into that soft, comminuted, low-density bone of the greater trochanter until it bottoms out on the implant, and that's exactly how you get that significant shortening and varus collapse. But with PMCS, the biomechanics are fundamentally different. That tendency for lateral sliding is immediately stopped dead in its tracks by the medial cortex of the femoral shaft, which is acting as a solid buttress. This prevents that lateral translation, and instead, you get controlled axial impaction, and that is how you achieve secondary stability. So the essential question for us, then, is how do we translate this evidence into our surgical technique? How do we actually apply this interoperatively? The authors give us a clear, actionable checklist for what they call an excellent quality of reduction. On the AP view, you want to achieve a slight valgus or a normal neck shaft angle. On the lateral, you're looking for near anatomic sagittal alignment. And critically, on the AP, you need to obtain either positive or at least neutral medial cortical support, while ensuring smooth anterior cortical continuity on your lateral view. And this quote from their conclusion really encapsulates that core mechanical principle. Achieving PMCS allows for limited, controlled sliding of the head-neck fragment until it contacts the femoral shaft, which in turn achieves that secondary stability. That's the whole ballgame right there. Okay, let's wrap this up with a condensed summary of what we as surgeons can consider incorporating into practice based on this evidence. In summary, the primary recommendation from this study is to really prioritize achieving a positive medial cortical support reduction when you're dealing with these unstable protrochanteric fractures. This non-anatomic reduction provides a remarkably stable buttress against varus collapse, and the evidence shows this technique is associated with less loss of reduction and an earlier return to full weight bearing. Now, of course, prospective randomized studies are needed for a definitive confirmation, but PMCS represents a very compelling technical consideration for improving outcomes in these challenging fractures.